This is Eastern Kentucky State College in Richmond, where the state's famed bluegrass region blends into the scenic beauty of the foothills of the Cumberland Mountains. Founded shortly after the turn of the 20th century, Eastern Kentucky State College has played an important role in the progress of the state. Originally designed to train teachers, Eastern has provided the state qualified instructors on both the elementary and secondary levels, and the nation with many leaders in all walks of life. Thousands of deserving young people today have a college education thanks to Eastern Kentucky State College. Without the school, most of these leaders of today would more than likely have been denied the advantages of higher education. The beautiful campus of the school reflects the forethought of the founders. Today, the same foresight is ensuring that the simple beauty of the Eastern campus will be further enhanced at every opportunity. Here is a distinctively different campus well-planned, thoughtfully cared for, and traditionally Kentuckian in all respects. This week, the serenity of the tree-shaded campus is broken with unusual activity, for it is this week, for the first time in 32 years, that a new president is to be inaugurated. This event is of paramount importance for on this man's shoulders rests the emergence of Eastern Kentucky State College into the 60s, a period of tremendous projected development in all phases of human endeavor, scientific and cultural progress, and the most trying times ever encountered by the nation's educational system. Let's follow through the highlights of the many activities of Inauguration Week and see just how they affect the past, present, and future of this outstanding Kentucky school. First on the list of official events is the social reception in the completely remodeled home of the president, the Blanton House, one of the school's original buildings and a college tradition. Here are the hosts, Dr. and Mrs. Robert Richard Martin. The second major event takes place the following afternoon in the Coates Administration Building. This is the meeting of the Eastern Kentucky State College Board of Regents. During this meeting, an unexpected announcement is made. A new dormitory is to be named for the incoming president. Later that same day, in the cafeteria of the beautiful Keene Johnson Student Union Building, the Board of Regents dinner is held with a distinguished group in attendance. Following the dinner, the new president addresses the group. His theme, our dreams and our vision. Early the next morning, delegates from colleges and universities throughout the nation register at the Student Union Building. This is the big day, the day of the formal installation ceremony. Just before noon, the inaugural luncheon starts in the Student Union Building. Dean W.J. Moore of Eastern presides. Speaking out the luncheon is Herman L. Donovan, past president of Eastern and president emeritus of the University of Kentucky. Dr. Donovan's theme is your heritage. Now, the preliminary ceremonies are completed. The stage is set for the colorful inaugural parade. To start the ceremonies inside Brock Auditorium, scene of the inauguration, the Eastern Choir sings the 150th Psalm.
Greetings are extended to the new president on behalf of the students by Donald Astom, president of the student council. On behalf of the alumni by Clark E. Farley, president of the Alumni Association. On behalf of the faculty by William L. Keene, professor of the English department. On behalf of the past administration by William F. O'Donnell, president emeritus of Eastern. On behalf of the delegates by Frank G. Dickey, president of the University of Kentucky. On behalf of the Board of Regents by Wendell P. Butler, chairman. And on behalf of the Commonwealth of Kentucky by Governor Bert T. Cohn. Delivering the keynote address is John H. Fisher, Dean of the Teachers College of Columbia University in New York City. His address, are leaders necessary? Now the oath of office, administered by Robert B. Byrd, Chief Justice of the Kentucky Court of Appeals. Richard Martin, we do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth, and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as you remain a citizen thereof, and that you will execute to the best of your ability the office of President of Eastern Kentucky State College according to law. And you do further solemnly swear that since the adoption of the present Constitution, you being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state nor out of it, nor have you sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel, nor have you acted as a second in carrying a challenge, nor aided or assisted anyone thus offending, so help you God. I do. We must give constant attention to see that our curriculum is such as to give students the basic concepts in their fields of knowledge and the special techniques needed for the mastery of their field. Seven, we must inspire and motivate each individual student, both through superior teaching and counseling. Our students must find here an intellectually demanding college experience as well as opportunities for social development. We must expand our facilities in order that we may take care of, in an adequate way, our reasonable portion of the young Kentuckians and young Americans who will knock on these doors of foreign missions. Christian charity and his guidance will sustain me as I remember the words of the prophet Isaiah. But though they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you. The ceremonies are complete. For the first time since 1928, Eastern Kentucky State College has formally installed a new president. On his shoulders rest the school's hopes for further greatness in the years ahead. The new president's educational philosophy points to immediate growth and expansion for the school. Opening of greater opportunities for the youth of Kentucky. From the very beginning, the primary aim of Eastern Kentucky State College has been to prepare teachers for the schools of Kentucky. The school's curriculum for teacher preparation is excellent both for resident and extension students. As expansions and modifications became necessary, they were done so with this basic concept in mind. Instruction at Eastern today covers not only the fields necessary for teacher training, but for the professional, industrial, and technical-minded students as well. The Eastern curriculum is constantly being modified 
to provide a wide range of subjects necessary in training for the complex career groupings of today's modern society. Any college is only as good as its faculty. And here at Eastern, one of the finest faculties in the state has been built up through the years. Eager students find top instruction and new students in the future will find a constantly expanded curriculum and larger faculty. This expansion in courses and staff indicates the tremendous past growth of the college. In the 10 years leading up to 1960, enrollment at Eastern increased over 400%, one of the largest enrollment growths in the country. In 1960, the enrollment was approximately 3,500 students. To take care of this growth, and to ensure all deserving students have a chance to go to college, Dr. Martin's first self-assigned duties were to provide physical facilities necessary to accommodate this growth. The immediate results of Dr. Martin's efforts are evident. New construction projects are underway in every section of the campus. Huge earth-moving machines, scores of busy carpenters and brick masons, cement mixers and air hammers, cranes lifting steel beams. These are the outward signs of this tremendous growth. The sounds are the sounds of progress, sounds of visions realized through the efforts of the new president to secure for Eastern the basic tools in the former facilities which the growing institution needs. For example, these ultra-modern housing units for the married students are replacing older, inadequate facilities. These new dormitories for the rapidly growing student body will soon be in use with more projected for the future. Yes, everywhere you look, Eastern is in the midst of a tremendous building program a long-range program that will double the monetary value of the educational plan. Operating on the belief that no deserving young person will be denied an education, Dr. Martin has leased various buildings in Richmond as temporary housing for the overflowing dormitories. The most obvious of these rental units is this downtown hotel, which has been converted into a temporary boys' dormitory great experience for the students majoring in specialties that may require extensive travel. In every important way, Eastern Kentucky State College, under the able leadership of its sixth president, Dr. Robert Richard Martin, is keeping in step with the pace of an ever-changing world. The years ahead, are sure to see increased growth and a continuing opportunity for higher education for the youth of Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky's optimistic approach to the years ahead is well planned under able leadership, a college with a distinguished faculty and an outstanding curriculum. <laughs>